My name is Brian Lowe. I'm the new executive director at the Vermont Council on Rural Development, replacing Paul Costello, who some of you may, may know. Oh, so the mic is not on on purpose. Um, the folks on Zoom can hear through the mic, but we didn't put an amplified sound system in the room. We thought the, that our voices would be enough in the room. So can, can folks actually hear me through the mask in the room? Great. And Alyssa, you can hear me on Zoom? Great. So um, we definitely appreciate your patience. Hybrid meetings are tricky um, and necessary um, during the pandemic. And so um, for the folks on Zoom, we will give you some additional detail in just a moment, but please stand by. And for the folks in the room, we're going to ask that everybody uses the mic when they're speaking tonight so that folks on Zoom can really hear you clearly. Um, we can all hear each other here, but it's very hard to hear on Zoom unless you're speaking directly into the, into the mic. Um, so I wanted to start by thanking John Copans, who's over here in the corner. You, many of you probably have met him. He's done just an enormous amount of work uh, to prepare for tonight and to run this model economy process. Um, I also want to note that Jenna Koloski and Nick Kramer from VCRD are here in the room. And Alyssa Johnson is here on um, Zoom, helping us on the back end to make everything work. So it's really a pleasure to be here tonight. And there's just a couple of points I wanted to make for, for folks, just to make sure people know who we are at VCRD and what we're trying to do here, right? So VCRD is an organization that focuses on rural Vermont communities. Um, we are a nonpartisan organization, which means that we've been well supported by Governor Scott, but also by Governor Shumlin before him, Governor Dean, Governor Douglas. Um, it's an organization that only works in local communities when it is invited into those communities. So we're very grateful um, for the invitation to be here tonight. We also don't work for the local leadership, right? So what we want to do is make sure we hear your voices and we want to make sure that as we go through tonight, we prioritize what people in the room want to see in Rochester over the coming months. This is our 82nd community visit over the last 20 years. And I think, John, this has got to be more than half a dozen uh, model, model um, community. Number seven, that's right. So almost 90 total visits over the last 21 years. And the reason we've been able to work in so many different communities is that the process does work. Um, we've seen child care centers built out of these processes. We've seen wastewater infrastructure built. We've seen community centers constructed. Um, and a variety of different things have happened over the course of each of these different engagements. Every community is different, right? There are different priorities, different challenges in those communities. And so a lot of the process today has focused on that. And John will take over and explain a little bit more about what we're doing here tonight in just a moment. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say as we're starting is it's a really timely meeting that we're having here tonight. Um, we are working in a period where the federal government is now quite active. Um, and there are more resources out there than there have been um, in the past. And so communities that are organized, that have clear priorities, and are willing to kind of step forward and engage in this work, it's going to be easier to find additional resources um, to make those things a reality. Um, it's something we've seen again and again, that the different communities that get organized, that have clear priorities, are the ones that can engage with Montpelier and engage with Washington effectively. Um, and I think what I'll do here is I'll turn it over to John to introduce um, Jeff, the, the local chair here, um, and to explain a little bit more um, about our process tonight. So thank you, folks. Uh, thanks, Brian. You know, if it's okay with folks, because I feel like I'm at a good distance, are folks okay with me? Can you hear a little better without the mask? Is that okay? Okay, super. So I'm John Copans. I direct the Climate Economy Model Communities Program. Really happy to see you all out here tonight. And you know, one of the things that is so wonderful about our work at the Council on Rural Development is that we get to know towns around Vermont. We get to go all over the state of Vermont. And we get to know wonderful people who care deeply about their communities. And um, as part of our work, what we do is we find someone who is, uh, is respected, who people know, and we ask that person to step forward into a chair role to really be a point of contact for this work locally, someone for us to be kind of a sounding board uh, as we move forward with that. And I want to invite up Jeff Gephardt, who I think many of you know. Jeff's lived in Rochester for over 35 years. He's the town energy coordinator. And honestly, he's the reason we are in doing this work in the Quintown region, uh, is because Jeff engaged the select board and said, hey, I think this is a, a cool opportunity for us. So Jeff's just going to say a quick word of welcome, and then we will uh, move from there. So here you go, Jeff. Thank you, John. Thank you to those who showed up uh, on Zoom and everybody who um, 
braved uh, the togetherness and came out here tonight. Um, just very briefly, uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I retired at the end of last year, but I guess I can't not work on trying to make the planet better uh, for our kids and our grandkids, and uh, decided I would uh, work on uh, being the uh, volunteer um, energy coordinator for Rochester. Uh, and I'm also leading the local energy uh, committee, the Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee, and I'm hoping that some of you may decide after this evening to continue your work uh, through that committee. Um, in any case, what we are here to do is to talk about the town assets, our opportunities, our challenges, and see if together we can uh, chart a course to a of a, uh, a future for the community um, in spite of the warming and uh, do what we know we have to do in order to uh, put a stop to that. Thank you. I was also going to say one other thing. I'm not a facilitator, so that's really why we've got these people here. I have not worked grassroots, and, and so we really appreciate the support from the Vermont Council of Real Development. Thank you, Jeff. So um, we really want to turn this conversation over to you pretty quickly. I always am a little sensitive. At the beginning of meetings, we tend to do a, an orientation. And honestly, it always feels like it takes too long, because it's really your voices that are going to make up the bulk of, of the conversation this evening. Here's what I'm going to do quickly, though, before we do that, which is just give you a very quick uh, orientation to what this is about and what tonight's agenda is is going to be so uh, as Brian mentioned um, this program is part of something called it's a mouthful but it's called the climate economy model communities program and essentially uh, we we've done this work in this is now the seventh community around the state of Vermont over the last uh, four about four years now and the idea is uh, we're invited into a community to really just facilitate a conversation around the future of your town and region and where you, uh, where you see opportunities in the future and how you want to come together to do that work. And in particular, we do that around climate and with a full acknowledgement that, frankly, climate is, sometimes feels a little bit like a risky conversation in a community. It doesn't always feel like it is a unifying uh, point of conversation, but I think here's the way we would frame it, is that sort of whether, uh, no matter how you feel about it, it's gonna impact Vermont moving forward. And for Vermont's rural communities, there are both opportunities and challenges in facing climate change, and it's worth spending some time coming together as a community and thinking about what those opportunities and challenges are. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll share something personal, which is my thinking around this has really shifted a little bit over the last two years in experiencing uh, the pandemic. A and, and the reason for that is that it was a reminder that as much as we, I think, would prefer otherwise, we're not an island in our communities in Vermont, right? We're impacted uh, by global supply chains and global conversations, and we, uh, it's incumbent upon us all, I guess, and this is what I've observed. It was interesting, someone, I won't call them out by name, but someone was just uh, nearly in tears with me uh, over on the side here, just talking about this place and how much people care about one another here and look after one another here. I've gotten a little bit of a sense of that. And so I think as we think about this conversation around the climate and what we call the climate economy, the future of this region, it's really about that uh, emphasis around looking after one another and building uh, the kind of region and community where, where we can look after each other's needs, given, uh, given what's going on outside of our borders uh, here, here in Vermont and here in the valley, uh, the White River Valley here. So that's, uh, that's sort of what this is about. 
one thing to emphasize, and, and Brian really hit on it, is we do not come to you with some preordained set of solutions. Uh, it's really following your lead. We simply are the facilitators of a conversation, and we uh, establish a process by which you all make some decisions about what you want to work on. And so that's what tonight really is about, is making some decisions, and I should sort of look over my shoulder because we've got you know, another 20 people on screen and all of you here in person. Our goal tonight is to make some decisions around priorities that you want to work on moving forward as part of this initiative. And we're going to split that into two parts tonight. Uh, we're going to have a first conversation around, specifically around energy topics. And here's what I'll say about energy topics. I think we all know they're important, but honestly, I think a lot of us find them a little bit boring sometimes. It doesn't always draw people in when you're talking about electricity and heating fuel and, and, and cord wood and those sorts of things. But I think we also know that it's wicked important. Right? Our, a household budget uh, in Vermont, typically, a typical Vermont household is spending about $5,000 on energy every year. And for a lot of households, that's a pretty significant piece of that, of, of that annual budget. So we're going to have a first conversation around a set of action ideas that you all brainstormed around energy opportunities. And then the second half of the meeting will be talking more generally about some community initiatives uh, that, um, that you all brainstormed as well. And we will do, for that first uh, topic around energy opportunities, we will actually finish that by handing out, I think you guys already grabbed it, we'll hand out a survey to you all. And uh, we will, for those on Zoom, you will have an online way to participate as well. We have some, uh, an online poll for you all to complete as well. And then, um, and then we'll take a very quick break, and then we'll come back together and have some conversations around these more community-oriented opportunities as well. And so there was four handouts in the back of the room, and you should all, um, if you don't have those, we'll make sure you get those. Uh, but those list those different, uh, those different ideas and opportunities. Uh, let me, there's a couple other notes for those on Zoom. Our goal in this conversation, look, this is weird, right? Here we are, sitting here in a room. We've got people on the screen. This is the brave new world uh, of, 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 of COVID and, and the pandemic. But our goal is that everybody in this conversation, whether you're here in the room or uh, on the computer, is an equal. You have the same number of votes and you have the same voice in this conversation. So that's kind of our challenge. We're gonna do the best we can. We hope you'll sort of roll with us if we have, fingers crossed that we don't have any technical difficulties as we pull that off. And actually that, that reminds me, this is a good moment to acknowledge. You see the guy behind the camera over there? His name's Zach. He works for Orca Media and they have just been an awesome partner in pulling this together. VCRD, we don't have the technical skills to make this happen. Orca Media is doing this uh, with us in partnership and just huge appreciation to them. Uh, yes, thank you. So uh, a couple other bits of direction uh, for folks. So for those of you participating online, the best when you want to speak, really just know that Alyssa is your partner. Right? She's kind of the interface between you and the room. If you want to speak, use the raise hand function to do that. Uh, but if you're not getting recognized for one reason or another, honestly, just unmute yourself and, and start talking. But that does remind me that in general, our preference is you stay muted uh, unless you're speaking so that we don't end up with a lot of interference in terms of noise. And the other thing is we'd encourage you to participate with your voice, not with chat. Alyssa can monitor chat for some technical needs, but we won't be able to read chat in the room. So, so, so uh, we would encourage you to participate with your audio instead of, um, yes, raise, raise hand. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over now to my coworker, 
uh, the amazing Jenna Koloski, who's going to facilitate our first session around energy opportunities. And here's one, one more point I'm realizing I didn't make around energy opportunities. You know, one of the things that we work on at the Council on Rural Development is when we come into a community, let's be sensitive to what are some of the things that are already going on in that place so that we don't duplicate efforts. And as Jeff mentioned to you in his remarks, there is already an organization, a committee called the Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee that is meeting, it, it represents the whole Quintown region, and, and that committee is doing some work around energy opportunities. So rather than create a new task force to carry that work forward, this first conversation is really around some priorities for that group uh, to carry forward. And so we've got some action ideas uh, that we're going to read as a group. And then, like I say, we've got a paper, paper sort of survey to fill out. And then we'll uh, re announce the results at the end of the meeting. But with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jenna Koloski, who's going to facilitate this section. So thanks, Jenna. All right. Thank you, John. Hi, everyone. I'm Jenna. I'm going to pull, well, I'm going to hold on to this because I'm going to kind of walk around the room. Um, so as John said, this section of the meeting is really focusing on those ideas for action within that kind of energy and efficiency sphere. So rather than thinking about those other community priorities that we're going to get to, we're really going to focus in on what are the things that this existing committee should take on as you think about the kind of energy and efficiency future of the Quintown region. Um, so what we're going to do, and this is the place where like you're not going to hear from us as much. We want to start to hear from all of you, both in the room and folks on Zoom as well. Um, we're actually going to read through that list together. We find in doing this work that it can be really helpful so that we're all kind of starting from a similar place to actually go through and hear community members read out the different ideas and the little paragraph describing them. So if you pull up, if you're in the room, you have got a kind of, uh, what is this color? Grayish, purplish gray, maybe? Um, lavender, that's really a lot nicer than what I said. Um, so pull out your, the lavender sheet and it's titled Ideas for Energy Initiatives. And Alyssa is actually going to pull those right up on the, um, for folks on Zoom, there's a link in the chat to that list of uh, ideas. And then there's also going to be a, a slideshow pulled up on the screen that we're going to read through together. So what we're going to do is just one by one, I'm going to ask for people in the room and people on Zoom to raise a hand and to help us out by reading some of these out loud. And then we're going to have a discussion to say, what do you think is most important? And let people kind of champion <clears throat> those ideas that you think um, the committee should be focusing on now and in the future. Um, people in the room, we're going to have to play along a little bit with the whole microphone <laughs> situation. So in order for people to hear us on Zoom, we do need to speak into this microphone. Um, and so I'll put my mask on and I'll come around with the microphone and, and let folks um, chime in that way. And for those of you on Zoom, we can hear you loud and clear when you chime in. So just go ahead and unmute if you'd like to read one. Um, and then uh, we'll hear you in the room. So does everyone have that sheet in front of you? Alyssa, let's go ahead to the first one. And would somebody like to start us off by reading that first one? Of course, the furthest back in the room we can go. <laughs> go ahead. And if you say your name, it's nice to know who's reading. Um, I'm Anna Isaacson, and the first one is public electric vehicle charging. Electric vehicles represent a significant opportunity for cost savings and carbon reduction. Rochester and surrounding towns could develop publicly available electric vehicle charger to serve local EV owners and visitors alike. Great. Thank you very much. Someone on Zoom want to do the next one? We want to hear some Zoom voices in the room. All right, how about in the room first, and then we'll go to the Zoom for the next one. Yes, go ahead. Promote the weatherization program. For those who qualify, the weatherization assistance program is an excellent resource to reduce energy costs and improve the health of homes. The task force should work actively with Capstone to improve local participation 
and this beneficial program. Great, thank you very much. How about somebody on Zoom? And you can either use the reactions button at the bottom of your screen to raise your hand or just unmute and go, go for it on the next one. Go ahead, Linda. Great, thanks, Linda. Someone else in the room for the next one? Uh, go ahead in the back and then we'll come over here. John's coming around with another microphone. <laughs> Thank you. And then over here, John, the next one. Thank you. How about somebody on Zoom for the next one? Somebody want to unmute and, and read this next one? Wonderful. Thank you very much. Somebody in the room on the next one? The first one on the back. Yes, go ahead. Excellent. Someone else in the room on the next one? Yep, in the back. Great, thank you very much. Does somebody on Zoom wanna read uh, the next one on the sheet or on your slides there? Either raise a hand or go ahead and unmute. Thank you very much. And someone in the room on the next one? Go ahead. Thank you. Someone else in the room on the next one here. Yeah, right behind you, John. Great, thank you. And the final one, does somebody on Zoom want to close us out here with the last one? I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, 
establish a revolving loan fund, municipalities can play a role in assisting residents with the deployment of a variety of energy saving strategies. The committee could work with area towns to establish a resolve revolving loan fund to be used on municipal environmental projects or to support residents who take on projects. Excellent. All right. So those are all of the ideas that, through the course of the conversations on the forums last month, we heard from participants around energy and efficiency initiatives. Um, I do want to really quickly check in before we go any further here. Um, are we missing anything here? And we'll get to those other community ideas in a moment, but just around the energy ideas, are we missing anything that the committee, that you think the committee might be focusing on um, that we haven't captured here? Yeah, that's a really important point, actually. And I, I think um, you can kind of think of these ideas as like the headline, right? Like, this is what the committee would be kind of charged with working on. And when we get to the community initiatives later, this is what a task force would form to do. Next month, we're going to get into the action planning and resources. So kind of voting on these knowing, yes, there may be grant funding needed. Yes, there may be more resources needed. But that's kind of like the first step that the committee might get to. So. It's kind of exciting tonight. We get to focus on the what <laughs> and then get to the important, you know, how and resources. So hopefully that, that helps a little bit. Yes, in the back. Well, it could be. I mean, it, it's not captured here in terms of what you're saying is potentially an action could be kind of a like a, an advocacy action, like Rochester could advocate for policies at the state level. Yeah. I mean, I guess my thought would be, and, and I'm kind of looking for proposals for like an action item that we listed here. So if you feel like what's missing is an action item that would be kind of this committee should focus on advocacy efforts at the state level, that's something we could add. Does that feel right, John, or do you feel like that's captured other? So if you, are you making that proposal? Okay, so let's kind of go ahead and add that as a alternative whoops, option. Um, so you'll see for folks in the room, and I think on the um, online, well, I think online we'll be able to add it in, but for folks in the room, when you get to the voting survey, you'll see that all these different ideas are listed. And then there's also a place for additional ideas, because we knew we might have missed something. <laughs> there might be something added here. And so the kind of additional idea number one is going to be this idea that the committee should work on advocacy efforts at the state level. So that's another option that you might decide to vote on when we get to that. Anything else that we're missing before we move on to a discussion of where the com committee might prioritize their time? Anyone on Zoom? Things that are missing? All right. So not hearing anything. Um, let's go ahead and dig in a little bit. We want to just spend some time, you know, oftentimes we see in a community that people come into a room with all kinds of different ideas about where the work should go, right? We all kind of come in, I, I often use the example of up in Montgomery where uh, folks are coming in the room thinking, you know, we really need housing in this community and others thinking we really want business growth and we really need childcare and people came in with really different ideas and then through deliberation and community discussion that evening, people started to realize there's one common thing that we need to do in order to meet all of those needs, and they ended up voting on wastewater infrastructure, which I don't think anyone came to that meeting really excited <laughs> about wastewater infrastructure, but through that deliberation, we're able to hear each other and say, you know, there's some commonality here that we could all be working towards. So 
we find it helpful, both with these energy ideas and later with the community ideas, to just have some discussion among each other to say, what do we think is most important? What are the ideas on this list that you would kind of champion as you think about um, the initiatives that this, that this committee, energy committee, might take on in the future? So I'm curious, does somebody, whether Zoom or in the room, have a thought looking at this list? What would you encourage people to support? Yes, and John's going to come around with the microphone. I don't have to do much. I just stand up here and shout things. I like the idea of the public electricity vehicle charging. Um, we're between several different ski resorts. We're also a stop when people get off of 89 and head over to Middlebury. I think it would be a smart way to people would know about the community and would be a useful thing throughout the year. So it wouldn't just be a seasonal thing. Great. So you'd encourage people to vote for that electric vehicle charging. Excellent. Does someone have another one that they'd want to champion? How about on Zoom? Does anybody have a, one of these ideas? And, I, and remember that you have the link to the list of ideas in your chat. So you can pull that up if you need a reminder for what those different ideas are. Uh, yeah, I see Carolyn raising a hand. Go ahead, Carolyn. Yes, I, I the, the mention made of doing things between the schoolhouse and uh, the park house and the school is because it would be simple little things that everybody could do. And I think, you know, start off and grow. And so, so many other things just seem beyond the reach of many people, you know, because of financial reasons or something. But if you knew there was something just simple that you could do, and the more people do it, the more impact it has. You know, it's just like every little grain of sand it takes to make a beach. <laughs> and I think we need to start like that and feel, feel some reward in a little bit of action and sharing it with the children and us here. I thought of starting here at the park house and I thought, well, gee, if school kids could do it and then we sort of share what our results are, a simple little thing like turning off the faucet when you're brushing the teeth and not leave it running while you're in the process. When you leave the room, always put the light out. You can always put it on again when you go back in. It doesn't cost any more, but it's going to save something. And to have the, I understand there's even a, a game that VEP has put together Put together that could be played doing this and I'm very anxious to see it and uh, start doing something. So if somebody could supply, I mean I can in my head, I can come up with all kinds of little things, but I think if it comes from you, a list of things that could be done and that goes to everybody, then it's, it's more like being part of the team. So I'm making that I think we definitely hear you that energy savings contest seems to be the one that you're really championing so that people can really own it and take kind of individual action. Um, Linda, go ahead. I think uh, promoting the weatherization program has multiple benefits. It leverages a community resource and it helps a lot of our community members who are at an economic disadvantage be able to not only improve the impact on the environment, but also improve the bottom line for themselves financially. They have more money to put back into the economy. Great. Thank you, Linda. So a, a vote there for the Promote the Weatherization Program. Someone else, let's go right back here and then go ahead. Yeah, you may need to raise your voice a little bit, but we can hear you. What's that? Sorry. Oh, Capstone is, and in fact, I think Linda, who just spoke up, works for Capstone. But Capstone is the community action agency in this region. So they're the ones that kind of hold that, that weatherization program. So the committee would kind of be working alongside Capstone to promote and bring that to more folks in the, in the community. That's, Sorry, I can't. The question was, is that different than efficiency Vermont? Like weatherization versus efficiency Vermont? Yes. 
Linda yes. might be able to, yeah. Linda, did you want to very briefly <laughs> share sure. how that works? So our weatherization program, there are a number of different facets to it, but uh, primarily we are out working with low-income households to um, retrofit their homes, to do um, surveys, to see if there are areas that we need to tighten up. We can help people put in uh, better insulation. Sometimes we can help them get um, better appliances. So there's a lot of similarities to Efficiency Vermont, but it is a separate program. Great. Thank you, Linda. So I see another hand, Zoom. I'm going to first go to, there was a hand here in the room, and then we'll go back to Zoom. Go ahead. Um, One that I'm, you would like to champion. Yeah, the evaluate solar siting options. Um, I've just gone through the process of trying to get several estimates for like a house, home solar installation. And it just struck me that it's basically the most inefficient way to try and install solar, having everybody do their own installation, figuring everything out completely on their own when we could be sort of coordinating and, you know, especially for people who aren't in the best spot for solar or don't have the necessary startup capital, you know, like there are really good uh, like tax rebates and stuff, but you still have to have the upfront that like the money upfront and there are financing options, but you know, it's not like everybody has, you know, the means to take on $50,000 of debt for, for solar. So it just right. seems like we could be coordinating a little bit better as a community to, to bring that asset to more people in the community. Great. Thank you so much. I'm going to go back to the zoom and then I'll come back. Um, I think it says Annie McKay. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on her computer. Um, Got it. I want to pick up on what Anna was just talking about, the evaluating solar potential sites. And I think that would be well to be combined with the efforts or the initiatives towards the um, energy resiliency zone. Because here we have uh, um, deep pockets with Green Mountain Power wanting to help, um, you know, provide a, um, you know, an infrastructure and to, to create a resiliency zone, even though I know that's going to be just um, powering the village itself. Um, that seems also to go hand in hand with the siting of the solar because there has been... Um, an issue in the past. There's been many times where the town has voted to um, throw some money towards solar, but then we've come up against a blank wall in terms of where to put it. So um, I just, Anna's yeah. got a good point about, you know, support in where's, where, to, where to do it. Great. So another, another supporter of that evaluating solar siting options. And it sounds like also maybe that resiliency zone work as well. Um, yes, you had a hand up. Go ahead. Carry on with the theme. Thank you, John. Uh, and just point out for everybody's benefit, the solar siting has actually been done once uh, recently. There is a map uh, in the Rochester uh, website under the town plan. Um, so anybody who wants to get a lead on that, that was done in the last, I believe, five years or so. Um, there's actually a local opportunity going on right now uh, around that. So I'll push for evaluate solar sightings as a priority. I also like the sharing of uh, success stories. I think our local newspapers uh, could get a bite on that. And uh, wanna point out that there's always, already a lot of support for electric bikes in the Valley. <laughs> so that may need less energy from this committee, but uh, <laughs> glad everybody's supporters. Okay, well, that's a good thing to know. Like maybe there's already some support there. It sounds like you're saying, some work has been done in that solar siting work, but it could use more work and you're encouraging people to vote for that anyway, knowing that there's some baseline work and that sharing of success stories as well. Great. Someone else in the, in the room have one that they'd like to champion or promote before we get to it? There is somebody on Zoom who, uh, Paula or Kevin? Kevin. <laughs> you go ahead and unmute. Yeah, so I would like to uh, advocate for the weather weatherization. And my reason is, in the early 1970s, I worked for the Bennington Rutland Opportunity Council as a carpenter doing weatherization for low-income people or people who are having a hard time with it. 
And a memory that stuck in my mind was on uh, one of these 20 below zero mornings we used to have in West Rutland. We showed up to do weatherization, fix somebody's windows. They had a problem with their door, wouldn't shut correctly. And there's a man and a woman and three kids, and they were sitting in their car with the motor running with the heat on because that was warmer than their house. And ever since that time, I've been sold on that. I think it would be a really good thing to promote. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that, Kevin. Appreciate it. Does someone else have one that they want to champion? Somebody in the room, maybe? There is one on Zoom. Uh, I can't see whose hand is raised on Zoom. Can you see, John? Nick, can you see? Robin? Go ahead, Robin. Hi. I'm I'm listening to these ideas and and I'm wondering, especially when it comes to weatherization, if there, you know, could be some kind of effort as a, like a, a cooperative, where perhaps people put in a few hours to help what, help someone get their house weathered weatherized, and get a few hours to help get their house, homes weatherized. I also think that sharing success stories is really kind of important, or just having a network of people, you know maybe someone use sun common for their solar and someone else use sun run and, and, you know, have a conversation on what their experiences are about. So I think those are both important pieces. Great. Thanks, Robin. And so supporting that sharing of success stories, and then I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying is fully captured in that weatherization program, but maybe we can kind of make a note that that might be a part of it. There could be some work locally to, um, to work on that together as a community. Thanks so much. Other things that people would like to support? Yes. I would say just to tack on to the weatherization program thing, um, I think promoting thermal efficiency for all is equally as important because the capstone weatherization program I think is great, but you know, it's, it's a program with sort of rigid guidelines and it's sort of, you have to do the whole thing, like their whole recommendation. You can't just take pieces of it. Um, and I'm not sure if it's like income based, but I know that with other programs, there's a certain, you know, there's a group of individuals that sort of falls outside the income eligibility, but still can't afford some other thing. So I think a broader idea of thermal efficiency for all is equally as important as something as specific as like the capstone weather. Great. It sounds like there's support for that weatherization program, but maybe some ideas to kind of broaden that a little bit. So maybe, I don't know if we could take a couple of notes that we could maybe build that in, should that become one of the priorities for the, for the committee. That's great. Were you taking a couple of notes, Brian, on that? Okay, excellent, thank you. Anyone else looking at this list have one they want to champion before we go to a vote? How about on Zoom? Anyone else there have one that you'd like to share before we move to voting? So let me just do a quick review before we move on. So a couple folks have spoken up about the electric vehicle charging, weatherization program, this kind of lead by example, focus on municipal energy opportunities. So those are things that the municipality and the town would focus on. Evaluate solar siting options, promote thermal efficiency for all, share energy transformation success stories, support electric bites, energy saving contest, support a resiliency zone, address waste in the community, unleash the power of creativity. So this was about artists and musicians inspiring change in the community. And then the idea of establishing a revolving loan fund. Oh, I'm sorry, and then our addition one, that's right. So number one on that additional idea is energy advocacy at the state level. So just a last check-in before a vote, having reviewed those, does anyone want to speak up for one that has not been mentioned that you feel strongly about? Okay, right here, and then we'll go to the back. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> I think we should schedule a performance to creatively share success stories at some point in this process. So it sounds like you're a little combining of that creativity and the success stories. I like that. Yes. 
And look at the space you have to do it. It's amazing. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, I think uh, addressing the waste issue in the community is really important also and working towards reducing that. Great, so you'd encourage people to vote for that addressing waste, to encourage the committee to focus on that. Great, yes, back here, John. So just kind of along the lines of the resiliency zone, um, has GMP given any idea what that would look like? Do we have a choice or is it just this is what we'd give you? I'll let maybe John has an answer for that. You know, uh, Dune might be the best person to answer that, your select board chair. I think um, Green Mountain Power, my sense is they want to work with the community on that resiliency zone and uh, they hope folks see it as an opportunity given that what the outcome of that would be is the potential to, to create what's called an island such that if there was an outage, you could have power within a certain area. Maybe that area is the village, maybe it's smaller depending on uh, what size it is. So I don't know if that answers your question. I see you yeah. having maybe another. Well, so I'm, I'm thinking, uh, so usually with solar and wind there too, is the most expensive part is connecting it to the system. And where the substations are along here are in a narrow valley. There's not a lot of room for solar like right here. So have we ever entertain the idea of putting in a battery? Yeah. They approached us. They, the Zoom can't hear. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Okay. It's a little um, bit of like pretend. For, they approached <laughs> us in the spring. I'm a select on the select board too, and Jeff and I were involved in meeting with them. And basically, the way our grid is set up is the village is a, is on 2400 volt and the out out lining areas are 7200 and so the village is pretty much a zone already and so if we were able to have a solar field close where they could attach to it that would be a good thing and not too expensive for them to to uh, adapt to. So we, it's just the thought, we put it out there and they've responded to it. And we just, it's all up to the voters and whatever comes forward with that. So, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a, you know, it's just a start. So we don't know much about it yet and they'll be in touch with us more down the road. And so a reminder of, a reminder that what this question is tonight that we're looking at is, should the Energy, Energy and Climate Action Committee, is that right, prioritize this in their work? So should they prioritize? And so this isn't deciding, yes, there will be a resili resiliency zone in Rochester. It's saying, should this be something the committee takes on and prioritizes? So that's kind of the question on the table. So I'd, I'd, I'd ask, unless either of you want to support that or support something else. Uh, let's come to you and then I'll do another check in on the uh, zoom. I see some hands there and we've got just a few minutes. Evaluate solar siting options because that would also encompass the resiliency zone. Sure. And I, think, I didn't I think necessarily Dune was want kind to of go saying that that was Dune, right? That was saying a little kind of saying like that really could be if the committee is prioritizing that this could be a that resiliency zone work along with the select board and decision, you know, and the town that could include um, some of that. That's great. Um, Linda, or let me just ask is Linda, we've heard a couple of times from you. Is there anyone else on the Zoom who hasn't had a chance to chime in that wants to weigh in? All right, Linda, you go ahead and then I'll just do a last call before we vote. Just a couple of quick thoughts. One was establish a revolving loan fund could be a tool to get to where Anna was talking about being able to expand that weatherization um, project to help folks that um, maybe don't fit under Capstone's weatherization program. Um, and the other is someone mentioned maybe we could set up a system to help volunteers help with weatherization. Um, a tool for that might be the Time Bank, the White River Time Bank that's being managed by the um, Kimball Library in Randolph now. Great, thank you, Linda. 
So let me just, we got a couple of minutes here. We want to move to a vote. Just a last call for anyone that wants to weigh in on, in support of one of these. If you're on Zoom, if you haven't found where to raise your hand, feel free to unmute and kind of let us know that you want to speak. And anyone else in the room? All right, well, let's go ahead and shift. John, if you're okay with it, go ahead and shift to a vote. Um, so remember, on this one, you have got the bright orange sheet that I have thrown on the floor up here. Um, and folks on the Zoom, uh, we're going to mute in one second so that Alyssa can give you some instructions. But essentially, you're going to get a link that you can click. And you're going to go and take the same exact poll that the folks in the room are taking. We're going to add these up. And we're actually going to share the results of this at the very end. We're going to share the priorities set in the next session and these all together. And remember the question here. This is not a new task force that we'll be forming or a new initiative. This is saying this committee that exists, that in fact is looking for volunteers, I believe, <laughs> and there's a sign-up sheet in the back, <clears throat> what, where should they prioritize their time as they think about next steps for energy and climate action in the Quintown area? So you've got your orange sheet. You have got three votes. So you can choose three ideas on your sheet. And remember that at the bottom, there's a box that says additional idea number one. If you check that one off, that's referring to the energy advocacy at the state level. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the sound on the Zoom so that Alyssa can walk folks on the Zoom through. Are you, are we, we're good? OK. So go ahead, Alyssa. And we're just going to take a few minutes to, to do a vote and then. Excellent. Thanks, Zach. All right. Thanks, everybody. There we go. Round one is done. On to round two. So as I described at the beginning, we're now shifting our focus. And I don't, oh, yes, I do. You have a set, a yellow, bright yellow set of action ideas. And I've, I've labeled these ideas for community initiatives. And honestly, I use that term because it's kind of as generic as you could get. This is just a bunch of ideas from you all about f opportunities you see for the Quintown region. And here's how this is going to go. Uh, we are going to have a similar process that we just had where we're going to go through and read all of the action ideas. So get your vocal cords ready for that. And then we're going to have a conversation around those action ideas, uh, around combining them. If you feel like some are overlapping and should be combined, is there anything missing that you would like to add to the list? Championing those ideas that you're enthusiastic about. And then, instead of voting by survey, we're going to hand out a little envelope to each of you with three dots in it. And all of the ideas are going to be up on the wall. We're going to get those easels turned around. And you're just going to walk over there and, and stick your dots to the ideas that you feel like uh, you're most enthusiastic about. And, that's, uh, and then, based on the results of that dot voting, we are going to initiate two new groups of people, two new task forces, to carry that work forward. So I guess one of the ways I like to frame up this conversation as we get going, and we'll get into this more, is think about not only what do you think would make the region better and is most valuable in terms of where to invest time and energy, but also consider, is this something you might like to work on yourself? Because an idea is only an idea uh, until people rally around it and, and, and roll up their sleeves and get to work. So, uh, and we will be a partner in that work. We will provide some support. But there's one thing we know at the Council on Rural Development, which is w we certainly can't do it alone. It really requires a team locally to carry this work forward. So with that, I think let's go. Does anybody have any questions before we read through this list of action ideas? Any questions before we do that? I'm looking at the screen, too. All right. And 
Jenna, I wonder if you mind doing the mic roll like I was doing for you. And actually, I'm going to ask you to do something which we didn't do the first round. If you're OK with standing up, those of you in the room, if you're comfortable, if you're not, that's fine. But if you are OK standing up when you speak, that would be great. Uh, who wants to read the first action idea? Anybody in the room or anybody on Zoom? Looking for a volunteer. Leslie Strauss, co-working and or business incubator spaces. With the rising prevalence of remote work and a patchwork of internet connectivity, co-working spaces can serve tremendous value for residents and visitors alike. A task force could evaluate different options for developing co-working spaces to serve the Quintown region. This group could also consider the potential for a business incubator as an additional economic development strategy. Thank you. Who else? Anybody in the room? Oh, we've got one right there. Great. Community events. The strength of the Quintown region is built upon the social connections that exist among neighbors and friends. These connections are forged and invigorated at the mix of events where a broad cross section of community gathers to socialize, celebrate, relax, and have fun. A task force could work to support existing community events in the region and to establish new ones that are inclusive and fun. This effort could also incorporate the vibrant arts and performing community, performance community, and to work to establish a better nightlife in the region. Nightlife. This is it. Thank you. <laughs> this is it. All right, I'm looking at Zoom. How about anybody on Zoom? Anybody want to? Read any volunteers. Oh, Linda, go for it, Linda. Establish the food, uh, Quintown Area Food Hub. The Quintown Area has a wealth of farmers and food producers, with many shipping their produce and products out of the region. There's an opportunity to develop shared resources to improve the economic health and resilience of these producers and to create fertile ground for the launch of new food and agricultural enterprises. A task force could focus on the establishment of the food hub in the Quintown region that would provide shared processing, storage, and distribution. This task force could also focus on shared marketing opportunities, establishing local outlets for food such as a co-op, and finding ways for local food to meet the needs of those in the region who are food insecure. Thank you, Linda. All right, next one, anyone? Looking around the room or on Zoom. All right, here we go. We've got someone in the room. Mine's two pages. Growing community engagement. While there is already a strong sense of community in each town that makes up the Quintown region, there are always opportunities to improve people's sense of connection to one another and to their own to their town. A task force could devise and implement strategies to increase community engagement in the Quintown region. Possibilities could include active outreach to the second homeowners and new arrivals, a town-wide read-a-book initiative, and an effort to increase cross-pollination between area schools and the broader community. Thank you. How about on Zoom? Someone on Zoom for the next one. I'll take this one, uh, facilitate learning and sharing amongst farmers and gardeners. With an ample population of farmers and gardeners, there is an opportunity to cultivate knowledge, sharing, and learning related to successful and sustainable growing practices. The task force could focus on creating venues for this collaboration, along with establishing community gardens and other programming to help people learn to grow their own food. Thanks, Dan. Yep. All right, next one, a volunteer in the room. All right, Vic over in the corner, Jenna, you see? Economic development in the Quintown region. The five towns of the Quintown region could come together to focus collaboratively on economic development opportunities for the area. A task force working on this would engage business owners and the residents of the five communities to establish a priority list that could include 
a shared economic development staff person, participation in state economic development programs, employer recruitment, shared marketing, broadband coverage, and more. This task force should consider impacts to all socioeconomic levels in evaluating particular priorities. Thanks, Vic. Next one. How about on Zoom? Is there somebody on Zoom who wants to read this next one? I can take this. Go for it. Welcome new residents. Whether because of a global pandemic or the impacts of climate change, Vermont is expected to become an increasingly desirable place to live. At the same time, newcomers, particularly those from other nations and cultures, do not always feel welcome here. A task force could focus on making Rochester and the Quintown region a more welcoming place for those visiting or moving to Vermont from afar. Thank you. Next. All right, Larry over there. Tiny homes and technical skills. The Quintown region, along with Vermont as a whole, faces a lack of affordable housing options and a lack of the workforce needed to build new homes and repair existing ones. A task force could design and implement a program that would provide the education and resources for participants to build a tiny house. Program participants would gain technical skills and could also have a role in building their own home. Next in the room. Yep. Hi. Um, increasing volunteerism and community service. The towns that make up the Quintown region are sustained and supported by a strong collection of volunteers who serve the community in many capacities. Some may serve at a local organization or select board. Others may organize youth programming and others serve as members of fire department or rescue squad. Given the importance of these volunteers, a task force could focus on creating new avenues and strategies to facilitate more people getting involved in service to the community. I'm gonna go off script and suggest that that and the welcoming new residents <laughs> and the uh, uh, growing community engagement all seem to be a similar force. Uh -huh. All right, well, hold that thought. We'll get <laughs> to it. <laughs> who else? Uh, who else? Is someone on Zoom want to read the next one? <laughs> yep, yeah, uh, Bill Matthews here. I'm happy to grow the, grow the local workflow. As with all other areas in Vermont, employers in the Quintown region are struggling to recruit and retain employees. A task force could collaborate with partners, including Vermont Technical College and Hartford Technical Center, along with area businesses and employers to better understand and then work together to reduce workforce gaps. Wonderful, thank you. And is there another person on Zoom? I think maybe I saw Carolyn unmuting. I don't know, Carolyn, if you want to read the next one. Climate focus on the floodplain. Climate models predict a greater frequency of high precipitation events in Vermont, a phenomenon very familiar to those living in the Quintowns. A task force could develop and deploy strategies to mitigate the erosion and, the, uh, and other impacts that result from these weather trends. Approaches could include encouraging abutting property owners to embrace mitigation efforts, including vegetated uh, riparian zones and livestock and agricultural free zones and floodplain assessments that accommodate floodwater dispersion. Thanks, Carolyn. I gave you a tough one. There was there was some a lot of words in that one. All right, next one. Somebody in the room. Do we have a volunteer? Oh, we've got somebody here. Promote transportation alternatives. Transportation presents challenge in rural places like the Quintown region. Owning and operating a car is a significant expense 
and alternatives to cars are sparse at best. A task force could survey the community to better understand the potential for alternatives to cars. The group could then devise strategies, possibly including shared vehicles, shared rides, improved transit, and safer conditions for walking and biking in an effort to provide alternatives to privately owned vehicles. Thank you. Next, somebody else? You don't have to support it. <laughs> How, how about on Zoom? Is there somebody on Zoom who wants this one? It's a lot of words, isn't it? It's intimidating. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll do it. So addressing affordable housing. Renting or buying a home in the Quintown region has become increasingly costly, representing a significant hurdle to anyone looking to move to the area and a challenge for area residents who are not homeowners. A new task force could engage the community and undertake research to better understand the gaps in available housing. The group could then develop strategies to address those gaps. Approaches to this challenge may include inventorying existing and available properties, making adjustments to zoning, shared housing options, dedicating municipal resources, and finding balance between short and long-term rentals. Thank you. All right, who wants to bring it home? Somebody, oh, we've got, all right. Protecting forest and agricultural lands. The Quintown region is renowned for its glorious landscape, including mountains, forests, agricultural lands, and a beautiful river valley. This natural environment provides many benefits to area residents and will become increasingly important in a time of climate change, a task force could inventory the natural resources of the region and then work to ensure that area forests and agricultural lands are protected. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Well done. All right. So uh, let's ask a first question of you all, which is, is there anything missing from this list? Are, are there things that you would like to see added? And if there are, we will, uh, we will write them up. So yeah, Sue. Oh, I'm gonna hand you the mic. Okay. Um, I don't think this would be a separate thing, but like I don't see any mention of children and families, but they, I guess maybe would be, as long as people kept them in mind when they think of each of these topics, then they would be included. <laughs> uh, well stated and good point. So that's sort of a general suggestion of don't lose track of families and children as we think about this work. Some of these have implications more than others probably, but in general, let's not, uh, let's not forget about the children. Other, do other people see anything missing that they want to add to this list? And that goes for you on Zoom as well. Carolyn, are you raising a hand there? Oh, unmute yourself. Yep. Yes, what was just mentioned about families and children, couldn't that be included in the community uh, engagement? I think that you're right, that that probably does have a home there. So maybe we just take that as a friendly amendment that as we think about community engagement, consider that it's inclusive of children and families. Does that seem like the right move? I see some nods in the room. Do I see some nods on Zoom? Okay, great. Thank you, Carolyn. And we're even adding a note here on the, on the, on the board. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. I was thinking from the previous list of tapping into our creative community and the music and arts community, that could probably be the other thing to add with the growing community engagement, getting everyone involved. Excellent. 
And I, I might reference back to Kinley's point, which is community engagement and community events. And there was a third one you mentioned too. Volunteerism. <laughs> so before, all right, so we have a proposal actually on some combination of a few because they're similar. But before we do that, I want to make sure, is there anything else missing from this list before we get to Kinley's proposal around combining a few of these ideas? Is there anything that folks want uh, added as a whole new different idea before we uh, talk about our, our, do any of these ideas kind of fit together and make sense to combine? All right, let's take up. So uh, Kinley has done what I was going to ask, uh, prompt folks to do, which is do any of these ideas sort of belong together and does it kind of make sense to merge them? And I'll just give you like a little strategic, here's the tension around combining and the opportunity around combining. The nice thing around combining ideas is if people care about those different aspects, you're likely to maybe get a few more dots if you combine them into one. The, the other side to that calculation is if a task force has too broad of a mission, it's kind of hard for them because they're like, huh, what are we really, are we doing this or are we doing that? So I'm not prejudging that in regards to what Kinley's proposed, but I just want to raise those two uh, flip sides and I see you've got something to add to the conversation. So I'm walking to you here. Well, I, I would hope that a couple other members out here might speak to this, but the first two, the co-working and incubator space and the community events, they, some people here may not know, there, there are groups already working on these two aspects. We have, you know, committees trying to, you know, come up with ideas in repurposing our high school or gaining ownership of that building. And in, in the absence of that, the arts committees, the theater, the music, different groups are also working as a task, a separate task force to go ahead and implement programs and work together. So it seems like, I, I think we've, we are addressing that in our town now. And maybe someone else would speak to that. But before you do, let me just, um, I want to bring things back actually to, uh, to Kinley's proposal. Let's try to sort of resolve that question, although I think what you raised was pertinent to it. So, uh, but I think what we have is a proposal to combine three of these into one. And I'm going to remind you which three they are. It's around community events. It's around growing community engagement, and it's, uh, oh, I'm wrong about that? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe just tell us first. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So, excuse me, Kinley's proposing grow community engagement, welcome new residents, and increase volunteerism and community service he really sees those as kind of a package. And he is suggesting that we make those into one idea. So if you think about those three distinct te texts, if people were to support this, they would all, a task force that was created would then take on all, sort of all of that, let's say. And so here's how we're gonna, uh, is there a, Somebody who wants to speak on this specific question before we move, and I do see a hand back there, Jenna, if you don't mind. Yep. Right here. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, so now you're suggesting two different, well, one same and one different as, as combined. I think what we need to do is really decide on Kinley's proposal before 
we go on to that one, I guess. And we will just say as an observation that when we host this conversation, no matter where we go, there is often a tendency to, to, to combine. There's an inclination to want to combine because you see the network and it just makes sense. My, I, a word of caution that sometimes you want to resist that temptation because if you, if you take on a, a, a task that's a little too broad, it can be a challenge. But um, often we get it wrong in terms of how we, we write these up. So here's what, here's what I want to do, and I need to do it on Zoom and in person. But I wanna, I'm going to ask for a show of hands around combining three ideas. And uh, those three are growing community engagement, uh, welcoming new residents, and increasing volunteerism and community service. And let's do in the room, can you show hands for if you think it's a good idea to combine those into one idea? How many people support that? All right, one, two, three. Wait, keep them up. For, for. Woo, okay, now, uh, now on screen, I wonder, yeah, how about, yeah, everybody who is supportive, can you raise hands? And then I'm going to ask somebody to give me a tally. If you know how to raise your hand on Zoom, go ahead and do that. If you don't know how to raise your hand on Zoom, you could actually unmute if you want to express your support or chat with Alyssa if you want to express your support. All right, we're watching the tally go on screen here. We've got seven I'm seeing on the screen. We're, and I'm hoping we're not missing anybody. OK. Uh, oh, eight. OK, eight. We've got eight on the screen. We had 11. <laughs> yeah, I, I th we're an even split a 50-50, because I think we've got about 20 in the room. So I think we're not going to do it because we just if there's a consensus on it it feels like let's do it but it feels like we're an even split um are there other things that folks feel like we should combine so i'm gonna let's move on to the next one we did have a proposal in the back around welcoming new residents and workforce do you want to sort of am i characterizing that right do you think those two should be combined you do okay does anyone have anything to say about that, or should we just go right to a show of hands? Who thinks those two fit together? And to remind you, that is uh, to um, welcome new residents, and I'm looking uh, for the grow the workforce, grow the local workforce. Who feels like those should be combined? Let's see a show of hands for yes, for combining those in the room. All right, and on Zoom, You guys are getting the hang of this. I love this. We're like learning as we go. All right, I think that's pretty clear that I think we're not ready to combine those. Are there other things that folks feel like really should fit together? Go for it. Yeah, I think establishing a food hub and learning and sharing among farmers and gardeners okay. might be something that would go together, maybe not. Yeah, I can see it. So establishing a food hub, hub and learning and sharing amongst farmers and gardeners. You can see that there's some commonality there. Uh, show of hands that those two really are pretty similar. Uh, show of hands in the room, who thinks we should combine those? All right, that's a pretty clear consensus in the room and I see a fair number. All right, let's, those two are combined. So if somebody could cross out one of those and then sort of add it to the other one, if that makes sense. So we're gonna, yep, all right. Thank you. Anything else that folks want to combine, or should we get to the discussion of these? Please. Please. Um, combining the affordable housing with the tiny, um, tiny houses. I think overall we have uh, a challenge of housing in the, I'll say, in the Valley or Quintown area, and there are many. Um, different solutions there that could be worked on at once, um, including those two things that, that we have listed. So I would propose combining those. Great, thank you, Dan. So Dan has proposed to combine the tiny house idea 
with the affordable housing. Show of hands for those that th think they're basically similar or could go together. All right. We've got a good majority in the room, and I'm looking at hands raised. All right. Yep, we're going to combine those two. You guys got that? Affordable housing and tiny houses are coming into one common idea. All right. Anything else? I'm ready to move on here, but anything else that folks want to combine before we do move on? I'm, unless Regina wants to speak on this, I'm guessing her hand is still up in support of one of the combinations, but all right, let's move on to the next question I want to ask you all, which is, and we started to get at this, and actually I think I may call on Vic right off the bat, but one of the things as you think about these action ideas is what is already going on in the community in relation to this? And somebody here mentioned school repurposing as a conversation that's very much alive here in, in, in Rochester. And so I just thought it might be, what you don't see is an action idea specifically around school repurposing. It certainly came up in ideas amongst uh, folks, but my sense was that this was something that had a home already in the community as a conversation. And so it, it sort of didn't make sense to sort of create a new a task force around that. But I do want to give Vic a very quick chance to just give an update on that, just so that people have a sense of the status of that. So go for it, Vic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So yes, uh, there is a committee uh, working presently on a feasibility study for the repurposing of the Rochester High School building. Uh, the town has uh, uh, the opportunity to acquire that building from the school district for a dollar. Uh, the facility has many assets and it has certain liabilities that come along with it as well. So the feasibility is uh, being studied. We have uh, received a grant uh, that will help us uh, uh, conduct this feasibility study. It'll it's scheduled to be concluded by this coming June. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be a pretty thorough process. The types of programming that we uh, are, are investigating uh, for inclusion in the building are um, a co-working space, as was mentioned uh, at the top of the list here, as well as uh, converting the shops into a maker space, uh, having a performance and educational space for various forms of arts and recreation and whatever else the community is interested in having done, um, and a child care center and an adult day uh, care center. Uh, and uh, we've also received interest from various parties about renting space in the building. So there's a quite a bit of interest in doing something with it. Uh, a lot of potentially very exciting uh, opportunities uh, for this uh, property. Uh, but uh, as I say, it has it has certain liabilities, it needs uh, capital improvement, it, it has uh, high energy costs, and so we're evaluating all that to see if it can make sense and work economically. Uh, some very um, invigorated uh, volunteers working on this, and um, I'm not sure if this is uh, uh, going off script or not, but if anybody's interested in working on those two topics at the top of the list, uh, co-working space and uh, community events, uh, see me, talk to me, uh, we'd love to get you involved in, in what's already um, underway and, uh, and get additional input on that. So, hope that. Uh... Uh, thank you, Vic. That's really helpful as some context. I see Linda on uh, screen has something to add to the conversation. Uh, yeah, just sort of piggybacking on what was said earlier about um, existing opportunities that could be leveraged. So, wearing two different hats right now, one is Capstone Community Action. We are doing a ton of work with. Um, communities and partners in the local area around affordable housing. And so there um, is support there or networks to tap into. Um, and then as the chair for the Hancock Rec Committee, uh, the piece about community events, um, we have started through COVID working together with a bunch of towns within the Quintown region. So we've really started talking about how we work more as a region versus individual towns and how we can leverage those resources. So. Um, I would think that would be a great place to, again, have an existing resource that could be leveraged. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Linda. All right. Is there anything else to add before? I, I think we want to transition at this point to let's get to the championing part, uh, which you guys have already experienced uh, once, which is uh, you're, you have the opportunity to persuade one another about which idea you feel like has the most merit. And so uh, I think we should, um, we, should, we should do that at this point. So who might have uh, one of these action ideas that they want to champion? Great, Dan, go for it, thanks. Yeah, I would um, advocate for the, for the housing um, topic. I think it has a lot to do with attracting families, uh, families with, with children to the, to the Quintown area, uh, a lot to do with um, uh, workforce and just um, quality of life in the Valley. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Dan. Others, who has something they'd like to speak to? Jeff. Well, I would like to advocate uh, for addressing affordable housing, um, but I also, going off script here too, uh, would put that together with grow the local workforce. We need increased income and affordable homes. So, so Jeff, Jeff, are you, are you making, making a formal, a formal proposal, proposal to combine, to combine those, those two? two? Is, that Is that what I just heard? heard? Okay. okay. All, right. All right. We've, We've got, got a to com we, we, and, and you guys, you guys have gotten, gotten so efficient at it that, that I'm, I'm going to take, take that, uh, that that proposal. We just, we just had a proposal to combine, to combine affordable, affordable housing with, with grow, grow the local workforce, workforce given uh, that those, those two are pretty, pretty related, related topics. topics. Uh, so, so let's see a show of hands who thinks those two really belong together. Who does? Show of hands. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine. Okay, nine. nine. And how about on the screen? I see. All right, I, I feel, feel like we're at that even split. split. So let's, let's not, not do it. it. We're, we're going to keep, keep those, those two separate. Uh, who, who else, else wants, wants to speak in, in favor, favor of, of one, one of these action, action ideas? Maureen, I see. I see. Go, Go for it. Oh, oh, or maybe Maureen was raising hands in favor. I'm guessing. Let's see. Yep. Yep. Anyone, Anyone on, on Zoom, Zoom or, or uh, here, here in the room, room want to champion one of these action, action ideas? ideas? In the in back, the back of, the of the room here. here. Um, well, it doesn't say it specifically, but when I read Welcome New Residents, I think a lot about um, immigrants and refugees and new Americans and the opportunity that we have as a state with such a such a, we're just such an awesome place. And I think, you know, we could do better in terms of attracting people of color um, and having opportunities to do that. And I think welcoming new residents is an opportunity to sort of do a little bit better in that regard. And I would say I would, I would champion that one. Wonderful, Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Others. Others. Others, others. Oh, oh, we've, got we've got a hand, hand here, yep. yep. Well, I looked this over and I think they're kind of all important. Um, I, I mean, there isn't a single one I would cross off the list. Um, but I do think that um, protecting the forests and the, and the lands around us, um, it's what draws so many of us here. And uh, we need a whole lot more volunteers in this community. So that's my two cents. So, so in, in favor, favor of both protecting, protecting the lands and, and uh, in, in, increasing, increasing volunteerism, volunteerism in the community. community. Yep, Is that better? Yeah. No. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, did you catch any of that? No. <laughs> All right. I'll start. I'll start. I'll start over. Yeah. I'll. I'll start over. No. I was. Uh, 
I'm looking at the, 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 the food hub and the learning and sharing amongst farmers and gardeners. Um, I was saying that, that for myself, a lot of our stuff gets shipped up north just because I don't have time. You know, I, I work full time and do that stuff also. So I just don't have time to deal with the advertising and, and all the other stuff that goes along with that. So having an area where I can, people know that somebody's gonna be there with this on this day for this price and has this much, that you know, all I have to do is show up with my stuff. And that also allows more locals to be buying more local food, which helps with you know, all sorts of carbon emissions and all of this other stuff along that line. And you know, the learning, I mean, that's huge too. A lot of people want to try this. I run into tons of people that, I can talk for this stuff with hours to people who have never raised an animal in their life and they're you know, really interested. So having that ability too would be great. Oh yeah, wait, do you need this stuff? <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Others have something they want to champion. How about on Zoom? Anybody want to chime in on Zoom? Uh, Bill Matthews here. I'd like to chime in for a second um, regarding welcoming new residents um, and also the school repurposing. Yeah, you know, I know the school repurposing is that's already underway, but I'm wondering if we couldn't um, include in that study the possibility of using at least part of the building as an opportunity to welcome refugees to uh, central Vermont, to Rochester, Vermont, and use the building for housing and you know a, a safe place to live and get situated in Rochester and also in the US. All right, thank you, William. Uh, so I just, I think that's the sort of uh, comment that we can take under advisement, I would say, is, and, and certainly Vic and other members of the school repurposing committee are, are here and, and, and have heard that, I see. So does that seem okay there? All right, yeah. super. Others, uh, I see, yep, Sue. Uh, yeah, I would speak up for promoting transportation alternatives. Um, we've got probably too many cars in our, in our area. My, my brother lives in Hancock with his wife and they need 1.2 cars, but they have two. So um, if we had more alternatives, and I think in between the Quintown area, you've got a economy of scale, we should be able to figure something out. But also in that description, I really like the safer conditions for walking and biking. Uh, yeah, sidewalks. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Who else? This is your chance. Go for it. Um, combining, uh, focusing on the floodplain and protecting forests and agricultural lands. Those seem like they could be compatible to me. All right, we've got another combination proposal uh, around protecting uh, forest and agricultural land and focusing on the floodplain, that those are pretty similar as I think what I just heard. Who, raise your hands if you think those two really fit together. I'm looking for some hands. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got 12 in the room. How, did you guys hear that? So the idea was uh, focus on the floodplain and uh, protecting forest and agricultural land as a combination, a late proposal to combine. Are there hands on Zoom that support that? All right, Sh show me in the room again, because we're, I'm, so we're up to two, and we're, oh. all right, I'm going to make the call that we've got enough, we're going to combine those two into one. So that's uh, focus on the floodplain and protect uh, farm and forest and farmland. All right, other championing, who else? has something they want to say. Is this actionable? Can it be successfully addressed? 
uh, which idea is most important, most doable, most impactful? I see Dune's got a hand up. Go for it, Dune. Yeah, I think the um, addressing housing and the, um, you know, the housing and the tiny house and, and that kind of support, that's, that's important. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Others? I'm also going to say a word about the uh, food hub and uh, advocacy for farmers and gardeners. Um, so much of our food is imported from places that are straits relative to water supply. They depend on irrigation and that resource is rapidly being depleted in many of those areas. Uh, we have a wonderful climate here that does not require um, irrigation to raise crops. And um, I think that our, that resource here is underutilized. I would add to that the idea of a co-op, which is sort of mentioned in here, and the possibility of having a resource for preserving and providing resiliency to the food uh, opportunity in the, in the valley, in this region. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm looking both on the screen and in the room. I'm kind of feeling like it might be time for some voting. I'm seeing some nodding of heads that it's some time for some voting. So uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to turn down the mic, and Alyssa is going to handle. You're going to have another poll on, for those on Zoom that Alyssa is going to walk you through that. Oh, you're writing it down. OK. So. Uh, we have some results, and actually, we're going to give you, Alyssa, if you could share, I don't know if you're ready to share screen. Oh, nope, Nick says no. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to let you know, actually, what are the top four, th remember you all filled out your first sur survey for energy action ideas. I'm just going to let you know what came out in the top four there. Uh, and then, of course, we will share with that committee the full list and, and, and the total tallies, but I, uh, it seems easiest to do that. So I'm going to do this from memory. Uh, explore solar siting was on that list. Uh, leading by example in terms of the municipalities and energy opportunities was on that list. Weatherization, uh, the weatherization program was on that list. And the final one, Brian, was, ah, public electric vehicle charging was number four. So that's a, a great list, team. That covers a, a lot of territory there. So did everybody get that? Public electric vehicle charging, the weatherization program, municipal energy opportunities and leading by example, and then solar siting in the valley as the four. And now uh, the two action areas, uh, folks in the room could see the dots and the tallies, and these really came out on top with some clarity. Uh, addressing affordable housing and, uh, and tiny homes and learning and sharing amongst farmers and gardeners and the food hub really rose to the top. So um, here's... Uh, I'm going to hand it over. Our work here, to some degree, is done, but actually, it's only just started, <laughs> which is we've got some priorities for work, and now our hope is that you all, as you leave this room and as you, as you talk to your neighbors and friends, uh, will recruit folks to join this effort and to join these task forces that are working on these topics. So for those in the room, uh, we are going to have 
sign-up sheets at the back table, and there are three sign-up sheets. There's one for addressing affordable housing, there's one for the food hub, and then there's one for the uh, Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee that will be working on those four priorities and other and other uh, other topics as well. And for those on Zoom, Alyssa is going to share an electronic sign-up sheet for you to sign up as well. Um, I'm trying to think of what. Oh, here's the other thing. The final step. I can't believe I haven't mentioned this in all of my. <laughs> talking with you tonight. The final step in this process is actually, we have a third gathering. We call it Resource Day, and here's what's going to happen on Resource Day. We are going to, in, we're going to convene these two task forces, and uh, in coordination with Jeff, the, uh, the Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee, and we are going to facilitate a, a uh, strategic planning exercise, an action planning exercise for each of these three uh, areas. And here's another key part. We're going to invite a resource team to come back to the community with expertise in these areas so that you're not planning and strategic planning in a vacuum. In fact, you're going to get people who are either regionally or at the statewide level involved in these areas and who have some expertise, not to tell you sort of what you should do, but really to tell you what you can do and to help you understand what resources are available to make that possible. So we are tentatively holding that final sort of formal step in this process a month from tonight. Monday, December 6th, details to follow, but I'm hoping you all will mark your calendar. We've got your information, so we're going to follow up with you one way or another. Uh, but um, I'm now going to hand over the microphone to our executive director, Brian Lowe, to just give you some closing remarks and really appreciate all of your participation. And honestly, this is a pretty exciting outcome. I always, we, we have such a fun job, which is to get to partake in a conversation like this and to get to see you all. The wisdom of the crowd never uh, ceases to amaze us. So with that, let me hand it over to Brian. Hey, thank you, John. You know, I'm so new that this is the first time I've seen a meeting quite like this. And one of the things that John and Jenna have said to me is that you start to really fall in love with the communities that you work in. And I can see why that's true coming out of a meeting like tonight in a space like this with the discussion that we had, right? I mean, it is really awesome to see the power of, John calls it the wisdom of the crowd, the power of our ability to solve things collectively. And there are real challenges on the horizon. So what I wanna leave you guys with tonight is really three words, urgency, uncertainty, and optimism. I think there's real urgency uh, for us in this room and for the folks on Zoom to move together collectively right now and get organized for some of the challenges that lie ahead and to secure federal money that is now um, a more realistic outcome than it was in past years, right? There's a real opportunity to move and to make a difference. There's real uncertainty about what the future holds. You know, I'm, I'm coming into this job from um, a background in Syria and Afghanistan where it's a really different set of challenges, a really different set of priorities. And it is a reminder to me of how uncertain democratic governance can be. Each generation has to step up and um, revitalize the institutions that surround us, make difficult choices, and solve complex problems. And I feel like that's what's happening uh, in the room tonight. And the third word I want to leave you with is optimism. I just, I do feel like um, what this group is doing tonight in laying out clearly and proactively a set of priorities um, is exactly what we need to be doing. And I think John's right. We have some of the best jobs in the state um, learning from folks and going town to town, um, trying to build proactively for the future. So thank you very much, folks. And sorry, one last thing. I, I really want to acknowledge everything that John Copans has done, Jeff, that you've done as the chair of the committee here. It's really wonderful. It's a great team at VCRD. And I think a lot of the credit for tonight goes to, to John and the folks in this room. So thank you.